Well, welcome to the beautiful, magnificent Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center as we go right in to day three of the historic Miracle Power Living School of Ministry. You know, the word theology means the study of God. Morris Cirillo is taking us into an incredible understanding of who God really is. He is a supernatural God that is worshiped as having supernatural power. I want to encourage you stay connected like the woman with the issue of blood. I believe your miracle, your impartation is in this school of ministry. Today, Brother Srillo is taking us into an incredible experience that he had when he was 14 years young and he was taken into the heavens. This is a man that has experienced miracle power living from a very young age. That's how he was called into the ministry. So I want you to get ready. If you're ready, I want you to say, I am one with the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Would you join me in welcoming God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. We need to understand that God has never stopped working signs and wonders. Amen. And it is not the intention of God to ever stop working signs and wonders. Now, this word sign run out of blackboard. Signs and wonders. Very unique words. The word sign is translated from a Greek word which is called semi. S E M E I A. S E M E I A. It's a Greek word that is translated called sign. The depth of the meaning of that word is quite unique. It means miraculous acts, visible demonstration of power and authority. Simeon, Simeon, miraculous acts, visible demonstrations of power and authority, sign. That Greek word for wonder is terrorist. T-E-R-A-S, terrorist. And that word wonder relates in the Greek to that which goes beyond the law of nature. Causing the beholder to marvel. Let's put them together. Simeon and Terrace, signs and wonders. They mean miraculous acts, visible demonstrations. 
demonstrations of power and of harm that go beyond the law of nature that cause the beholder to mark. Put your hand up to the Father. Oh, glory to God. I don't know whether you're going to be able to get through this or not. Put your hand up to the Father. I am one. down through the ages. I have to keep saying this to us again and again. We're not just talking about acts of healing. For a few minutes, let's just look at three places where God performed signs and wonders first in the nation of Israel. Exodus 13, God led the children of Israel through the wilderness. And I'll have a lot more to say about this as we continue the revelation. Through the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. Exodus 16, he fed them manna from heaven. He supplied water, gave them drink out of a rock. Exodus 19, he came in the earthquake and in the fire and in the manifestation of smoke upon Mount Sinai. Joshua 10, and I could go on probably for hours. He caused the sun and the moon to stand still. Now I'm talking about the manifestation of signs and wonders and miracles. And that's not even touching the tip of the iceberg of what God did through the Israelites. Remember what we said? That we have to come into an understanding that God has never stopped working signs and he's never stopped working wonders. In the life of Jesus, that manifestation continues. He multiplies the loaves, a 
of bread and fish and feeds the multitudes in Matthew 14. He speaks to the winds and the waves in Matthew 8, and they obey him. Peter walks on the water at the command of Jesus, who bids him come. Darkness comes upon the land, Luke 23, for the space of three hours. Matthew 27, an earthquake comes and rents the great veil in two in the Holy of Holies. In the early church, we could go on and on in the manifestation of the life of Jesus as well. We have to come into an understanding that God's manifestation of signs and wonders has not stopped. The church may have stopped. In the early church, in Acts 2, he sends the sound of a rushing mighty wind. In Acts 2, he sends tongues of fire. In Acts 5, he sends angels to deliver apostles out of prisons. In Acts 9, he blinds Saul on the road to Damascus. He directs Anarius in a vision to go to Saul. In Acts 28, he protects Saul from a deadly bite of a serpent. In Acts 8, he supernaturally translates Philip. Signs and wonders from the days of the Israelites to the days of Christ to the days of the church have not ceased. And there's nowhere in the pages of this Bible that God tells us that in the last days or in any time, it is his will or his intention that the manifestation of signs and wonders cease. We have an apostate church today that denies the power of God. But instead, The end time promise of God is that we will experience greater manifestations. We will experience and see greater signs and wonders. God has always dealt with his people it has never been any different except when you find periods of dark ages and when you find periods of spiritual apostasy. And when it seems like the voice of God is not being manifested. But this is not that time we have had periods of that from the time of the early church till now, but this is not one of those times now. This is God's end time, harvest time, where God is manifesting himself. Say the word manifest. manifest. And put this in your spirit, this word harvest right here. Harvest is the time of the greatest manifestation. I don't think you got that. 
Not when you put the seed in the ground. Not when you plant. Not when you cultivate the ground. Not when it shoots forth and begins to grow or comes through what we call that process, that period of maturing. Not even when the corn or the tomato or whatever it is that you're going to harvest ripens. It's not the planting time. It's not the maturing time. It's not the ripening time. But it's the harvest time that is the time of the greatest manifestation. Because when it's harvest time, you partake of it. You actually receive it. You get it. This is harvest time. Somebody tell me what time it is. Somebody tell me what time it is. It's the time for God to once again deal with his people through signs and wonders and miracles. It is harvest time. God has always dealt with his people through signs and wonders. God destroyed the earth and every living thing in the earth except a man and those that escaped with him in the ark by the name of Noah. And God promised Noah that he would never again destroy the earth through a flood. And to confirm this promise, what did he do? Write him down something on a piece of paper? Gave him a sign. God told Noah, Genesis 9, 12 through 13, this is the sign of the covenant. I am expecting God. I am expecting God's supernatural provision for his end time people exactly as he manifested himself under the covenant with his people called Israel, but only in a greater, more stupendous, supernatural way of the manifestation of the very glory that God is himself. the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all successive generations I will set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a semi It shall be for a sign. It shall establish a covenant between me and the earth. I will never again destroy the world by a flood. Abraham, God manifested himself to him through a Simeon. Through a sign, everybody say sign. sign. 
and to confirm the promise that God gave to Abraham in Genesis 15, 17 through 18. You know, it's a strange thing, but it's true. God made a promise to Abraham, and then Abraham came to God, and he said, what sign or what will you give me that I'll know that this is going to come to pass? What is it that you're going to do so I'll know it? Now, I want us to put this deep into our spirit this morning. This was not the lack of faith on Abraham's part. God tells us to come to him. He tells us to reason with him. It was not a lack of faith in the heart of Abraham that said, by what means shall I know that this is going to come to pass? It wasn't a lack of faith at all. Why? Because this is the way God deals with his people through signs and wonders and miracles. Genesis 15, 17. Abraham wanted the sign. God gave him a sign. He manifested his presence peculiarly through a flaming torch and a smoking oven. And God passed between the pieces of the sacrifice of this offering. And God walked through the pieces of that offering. He said, Abraham, this is your sign. And God entered into an everlasting blood covenant that bound him and Abraham together forever. God chose to reveal Moses, God chose to reveal himself to Moses through a sign. Can you see Moses out there in the wilderness? <laughs> Can you see him on Mount Sinai? You see him out there tendering his father-in-law's sheep? What a sight. All of a sudden, he sees a thorn bush crackling and burning. Exodus 3.3, 3, he said, I'll go over. And he said, I'm going to see this strange sight. Oh, Lord, I'd give it anything to be there, wouldn't you? He said, why the bush doesn't burn? And when he got there, he saw a supernatural manifestation. You say to me, Brother Shalom, what was it? It was the divine presence of the glory of God, but it was more than that. It was the literal angel of the covenant, Jesus Christ, the pre-incarnated son of God who manifested himself to Moses. How did God get Moses' attention? children through the words of somebody oh that's about all we got brother walk into our lovely churches please when I say these things I don't mean to be critical please don't take them wrong 
But how many of you know, if we are going to manifest what God has planned for us, we have got to have something more. Now, if you want to, you can walk into the church of your choice. Go ahead on Sunday morning. Help yourself if you want to. And you can just sit down Sunday after Sunday. Go ahead. Help yourself if you want to. And sit like a bump on a log. Help yourself if you want to. The music is wonderful. The choir is wonderful. The preaching is nice. I didn't say it was wonderful. Some of it is. Thank God we've got some great, wonderful preachers. But you can go ahead through these motions if you want to help yourself. And then get up after it's all over and shake everybody's hand and say, Oh, brother, oh, sister, oh, isn't that wonderful? Wasn't that marvelous? Wasn't that great? Oh, we had such a nice time. I hope you'll come to my house Sunday or maybe next week. We'll have tea together. And then you go through the humdrum routine of a week that brother is so boring. Some of you can't wait to die. Sure, that's the only exciting thing you got to look forward to, brother, when you're gonna go home to be with Jesus and get rid of this boring life. Got nothing to look forward to except getting up and going through the routine, going to bed, getting up and going through the routine, going to bed. Come on, don't say amen, say ouch. I believe God's got something more for us than that. about him. Exodus 3, 4. He said, here I am. I wonder if he knew who he was saying, here I am to. (laughs) No, he didn't. It wasn't until, now get this brother, it wasn't until God used the sign to identify Exodus 3, 5. God said, don't come any closer. It's far enough. Take the sandals off your feet. The place where you're standing is holy ground. Has always dealt, God has always dealt with, his with his people 
through signs and wonders. I will never forget when I was a little boy, 15 years of age, six months, six months, a little Jewish boy, 15 years of age, six months out of a Jewish Orthodox orphanage, when God picked me up from the earth and he brought me into heaven. He called me when he brought me the message of salvation out of the Jewish Orthodox orphanage. He called me to preach. I told him no. I said, I'll love you. I said, I'll serve you. But I said, I will not be a preacher. Then God picked me up six months after I came out of the Jewish Orthodox orphanage. He picked me up, translated my spirit into the heavens. And there appeared before me in the cloud about the height of a figure of a man, six feet tall, three and four times as broad as a human being. It had no physical features. It was a flame of brightness. It shone like a million moons and suns and stars all rolled up into one. I can't tell you the whole story because it would take too long but there, the presence of God drew me and brought me right to its side. A little Jewish boy. And God's presence moved one step away from me. And up there in the sky where the presence of God was standing was two footprints. And God allowed my eyes to see through those footprints into a manifestation of hell. And when I saw and heard the cries of the unsaved and the lost and the damned and the backslider, when I heard that, I took my feet and I put them into those footprints when I was 15 years of age. God asked me for my life. I gave it to him. by a supernatural sign. The sky was filled with millions of people as far as the human eye could see. The glory of God shone like rays over the heads of those people. And God's voice spoke out of that manifestation of his glory. <laughs> God said to me, son, don't be afraid. You're not going to stand in the place that you've made for yourself. But he said, you'll stand in the place that I, the Lord, your God, have made for you. And he said, my glory shall surround you. And when you see my glory, over the midst of my people, then know that I am there to show myself strong in behalf of them that love me. God commissioned a Jew march by a sign. One of my staff members asked me a couple of weeks ago, they said, Brother Shula, you should be retiring now. I said, when God asked me for my life, he didn't ask for 10 years, he didn't ask for 20, he didn't ask for 30, he asked me for my life when I was 15 years of age and I stood as close to him as you could touch out and reach my flesh. I gave him my life, yeah. my life. Yeah. By a sign, yeah. God commissioned 
Moses for a test by a sign. The great parallel of the people coming out of the land of Egypt through which God was going to use this mighty instrument, a meek man, a shepherd, in the backside of a wilderness. That God was going to transform into a mighty man. He did it. you to shout, I am one with the God 
of Morris Cirillo. What an incredible experience. Honey, you are in the house today. Mark Masson standing on this beautiful Morris Cirillo Legacy Center International Pavilion. What an incredible qualification to have to present a school of ministry on miracle power living when at the age of 14, young Morris Cirillo, an orphan Jewish boy, literally transported into the presence of God, had an experience like Moses, had an experience like Paul. And we watched him almost a hundred combined years between Mark and Don and Jerry and I walk in this presence of a miracle working God. Honey, what an incredible day today. Yes, yes, it has been. And I loved all the examples that Dr. Cirillo shared about uh, men from the Bible, women from the Bible who had been called by a sign. And doc, the miracle book that Dr. Cirillo wrote really highlights a lot of his personal testimony. Yes. And I love what he covers so clearly in the, in the miracle book that goes along with what Dr. Cirillo was teaching today, that focusing our eyes on the natural, on our circumstances will hinder us and it will hinder our relationship with with God. Uh, but as we focus our eyes on the bigness of our God, because He is big, He yeah, is right. supreme, He know. is a supernatural being. And one of the things that Dr. Cirillo really uncovers in the miracle book that I think has a lot of people confused is what is the source of our problems? And uh, Dr. Cirillo talks about when something bad happens to us, do we blame God? Do we count it as a bad break? Uh, if something good happens, have we had a lucky day? Well, he, he really uncovers what the source uh, of our problem is and that God never intended man to know sin or sickness, uh, death, that God's not sending pain and sickness into your life. And so we know that uh, Jesus came so that we would have an abundant life, Amen. but the enemy has come that uh, would steal and kill and destroy. And so this is why it's so important to focus on the bigness of our God and not upon the bigness of our need and know Amen. that God is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And in the midst of every battle that we face, uh, God is bringing the solution. God is bringing the victory. And so we know that we can go on this journey, trusting in Him more and more as He shows Himself strong in our behalf. And you know, honey, I love that. And Mark, I'm so excited today because one of the things we get to do in this school of ministry is to offer every one of the students, every one of the viewers, the opportunity, no matter where you're located, you can download the Miracle Book. It is 100% free. It is the gift of David and Teresa Cirillo. And it is like you say, the behind the scenes on the life of Morris and Teresa and their children and miracles that they experienced themselves. And then the five greatest things that God showed Brother Cirillo from the Word of God, Mark, to walk like we're talking about in a rhythm of miracle power living. I mean, and that amazing book, the miracle book, the next chapter, it's gonna be your chapter. Yes, sir. Because God never stopped working miracle. Amen. So what do we do? We need to position ourselves, and I do it myself today, to get ready to see God performing acts in my life and in the life of people who are ministering to that are beyond yes. natural. I agree in my mind, I agree in my heart that the God I serve is a supernatural God and that He has not stopped performing Amen. miracle Amen. and He is doing miracle in my life and the next chapter, it's miracle in your life. You know, Mark, the Bible says that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. And Brother Cirillo is telling us in Miracle Power Living that we don't serve a day of miracles. 
We don't serve a doctrine of miracles, but we serve a God of miracle working power. Listen, I want to encourage you today, get somebody that you know that needs this infusion, that needs this promotion, that needs this impartation in their life, their family, their ministry, get them connected to the Facebook School of Ministry, YouTube, if you're on the podcast. Tomorrow's message, you do not want to miss it. 10 reasons why God manifests himself through signs and wonders and miracles. You do not want to miss it. What a powerful foundation, revelation, that Dr. Shrill will be bringing us tomorrow. He will be preaching all 10 of the reasons. So on behalf of my beautiful wife, Jerry, on behalf of Mark, our first lady, Teresa Cirillo, our president, David Cirillo. This is Greg Morrow reminding you, stay connected. Your best, your double portion is yet to come. We'll see you tomorrow live from Legacy for day four, the incredible Morris Cirillo Miracle Power Living School of Ministry.